Well, I think when the project was first raised, it was just inconceivable that it would be achievable because it was just such a deep hole that one was trying to achieve. Uh, it was just an enormous challenge. And given the time constraints in which to do the, the drilling work, because one of the issues with the drilling is that once the hole is actually created into the lake itself, we only have 24 hours before the hole has frozen to a size which won't allow us to operate the equipment into the lake. So we're very much up against the time to deploy the probe and then the sediment corer. The design of the hot water drill is very straightforward in many respects, very similar to the hot water that you might use on a jet spray to clean a car. The nozzle itself delivers water at 2000 psi and 90 degrees C, which is fundamentally needed to melt the ice to create a hole of over 360 millimetres in diameter. And this is the size of the hole that we will be producing all the way down to the lake itself. Drilling such a long hole obviously requires a very long hose. And this is particularly difficult to find companies capable of producing a continuous hose of 3.4 kilometres. There are in fact only two companies within the UK. The hose itself has to be strong enough to support not only its weight, but also the weight of the drill nozzle on the end of it. This is controlled via a winch system so that we can control the descent of the hot water drill all the way down to the lake itself. Although the principle itself is very simple, the delivery of the system on the scale that we need to do is quite challenging. The size of boiler, for instance, is 1.5 megawatts. So that's an awfully large power consumption to produce the quantity of water we need at the temperature in order to hot water drill. Making equipment which is going to be robust enough to work within the environment at minus 20 is certainly a challenge. Many of the components that you need to create a system aren't designed for such low temperatures. Uh, many of the companies that provide equipment won't provide guarantees. And so testing prior to its use, uh, cold testing particularly, is of great issue in order that we have the confidence that this equipment, having transported it halfway around the world, will work the first time that we use it. And given that the require such redundancy in order to ensure that if there are any failures along the way, we have sufficient equipment to overcome those and still produce the hole into the lake. I've worked for British Antarctic Survey for 20 years and been involved in very innovative projects over this period of time. And never been asked to drill to such a depth within the Antarctic. So this has been phenomenal in that respect to be able to be involved with a whole variety of people with the one goal of looking for life within a lake.